Hey, Tim here, and today I'm going to be showing you how to create hex bins in Tableau. I was reading recently a paper from the Tableau Research website on hex binning, and the paper basically talks about the distortion that takes place when you uh, do hex binning in a geographical context, because of course the world isn't flat, and so when you project hexagons or any sort of shape uh, mapping onto a map, then actually you're distorting the information. So the paper covers this. It's a quite a geeky paper. So uh, if you're into that kind of stuff, definitely head there. But uh, it got me thinking about hex bins in Tableau. And so I wanted to show you today how to do that for uh, data that might have an X and Y axis or mapping data. So a lat and a long. Um, the data I'm going to be using today is actually from uh, this, this site here. It's just dummy data. I've created a, a basic schema here. So you have customer, customer details. Uh, you have the X and Y axis. And then you have latitude and longitude. And just for fun, I've added in some country uh, data in there as well, just so we can uh, very easily distinguish between two regions. Um, the data... Uh, I'll be using, I'll be putting that into 9.3.3. Uh, hex binning is supported from Tableau version 9 onwards, so that's a really important requirement. If you want to follow along, make sure you're using version 9 onwards. Okay, so I'm going to connect to my mock data. And as I showed you, we have these fields here. So you have some customer data, some country data, some emails, and then you have the uh, four fields we're going to be looking at when we do hex binning. Now, hex binning itself is just like binning in Tableau. So if you wanted to say bin all your uh, measures, you can just right click on the option, go to create, and then select bins. And it gives you some options here about how big those bins are. Now, hex binning is a very similar concept, except for what you're really doing is you're doing it on a two-dimensional plane. So you're basically taking uh, items that are near each other and you're putting them into a bucket and having one data point to represent all those sort of um, neighboring data points. And the function that you use to do that is called hex bin. So when you type in H E X, you get these two functions here, hex bin X and hex bin Y. And you need both of them when you create your hex bin calculations. You need one for the X axis and one for the Y axis. And if you're doing this for mapping, you need one for the latitude and one for the longitude. So first I'll start by showing you how to do this for the X and Y axis. So first of all, I'm just gonna hit enter to capture the first uh, hex bin function. And then here, I'm just going to type X, which is one of my fields, and then Y. And that's it. I've created the hex bin X calculation. So I'll give this the value hex bin X. And because I'm lazy, I'm going to copy this. I'm going to click OK. I'm going to create another calculation. I'm going to paste that in there. I'm going to call this hex bin Y. You can see I've just changed that function there and click OK. So now we have these two new calculations. Now, step number two, the really important bit is to make sure that you move these from the measures pane up to your dimensions pane. So I'm just going to select both of these and I'm going to move them up. OK, and now they're there. And now we can actually start to put them into our visualization. So I'm just going to bring out hex bin X and I'm going to bring out hex bin y. Now immediately, this doesn't look like what I was trying to create. I can sort of see something's happening, but it, I can't see any sort of shapes. And that's actually because I've dragged out dimensions onto the visualization. And although we wanted to do that in the first place, when we visualize them, we want it to be done on a continuous scale. So we need to actually change these to continuous items. Okay, and as you can see, we now get something that looks fairly close to what we're trying to achieve. You seem to have data points grouped in a very organized way. You can even see gaps in the data where there isn't data with a neighboring sort of cohorts. And if I very quickly plot the X and Y axis, I can show you that this is actually working. Because if I do this and I bring in the lowest level of detail, which I think is um, 
I think it's going to be first name and customer ID and also those three. Yep. Put that on detail, then that's actually what you get when you have the full level of detail. So the hex binning is actually working. And so this, this is working, but it still doesn't quite look like what we want to achieve yet. There seems to be a very high density of binning going on. So how do we address that? Okay, well, it turns out we have to edit the calculations that we created in the first place. And to do that, I'm actually going to create a parameter. Okay, and the parameter will allow us to change the value that we're going to use. You don't have to use a parameter, but it gives us a little bit of flexibility and it will allow me to demonstrate to you how to do this on the fly. So I'm going to call this parameter a density. Density. Okay. And I'm going to give it a range. I'm going to give it a range of zero to a maximum of about 10. And I'm going to make the step sizes uh, quite uh, frequent. So I'm going to do 0 0.02. And I'm going to click OK. And if I just show the parameter control, you can see the density is one. I want to leave that just there for now. And now we need to adjust our calculation. So if I click on edit, and basically what we want to do is we want to basically multiply these X and Y values and then divide by a value. So we want to increase the scope that Tableau looks at the data at, but then reduce the value so that it doesn't skew the data. I'm probably not explaining that too well, but let me just type the calculation in and you'll see where I'm heading. So I'm just going to multiply this by the density. I'm going to multiply Y by the density as well. And then I'm going to divide the whole thing by density. Okay, and that's hex bin X. And we can actually just copy this part of the calculation. Click OK. And then paste that here. OK. So you've seen me change these two calculations and yet nothing has changed. Now, remember, the density value is set to one. So if I look at this value, well, of course, X multiplied by one, Y multiplied by one divided by one is going to give me the same value as I had before. But the cool thing now is if I change the density, if I let's say go down a little bit, you can start to see what's happening. The groups are getting larger. I'm getting less and less circles to the point where if I was just to take this down manually to 0.012, I have much, much, much less um, space going on there. Okay. So if I just bump up the size, we can see. And just as proof that this is working, I'm actually going to bring in the number of records filled here. And I'm going to put that on label. Okay. And I'm going to make sure that this is centered like so. So you can see it inside of the circle. And I'm going to bring the size down a little bit so you can see what's going on as these get bigger or smaller. Let's go on, let's make it a bit bigger actually. Okay. So watch what happens. At the moment, we have roughly 350 to 70 items per shape. You can see on the fringes, we have less density. And in the middle, you have around 380, in some cases, 400. So if I bump this number up, you can see the number of items in the squares getting smaller. And if I make that really small, then you can see the text just about there. We're now into the 50s. So this is actually working and this is hex binning working on the dashboard. Now, the last step is actually making these shapes uh, sort of interesting. So in hex binning, it's actually named after a hexagon. And right now I'm using a circle. Now, the reason hex bins are used or hexagons are used is because they're actually the most compact way of having shapes side by side. Uh, if you look at a honeycomb, it's even nature's choice for having a lot of uh, sort of shapes compacted into a very small sort of surface area and, um, you know, space. So if I go to shapes here, 
I've actually got my own um, hex billing shapes. And I, I come out a bit crazy with these, so I actually have quite a few. And I'll be attaching these to the blog post. So if you're watching this on YouTube, uh, hit the link at the bottom in the comments and it will take you to the blog post and you can download these shapes. And I'm going to click apply. And so here we have a, a very basic hexagon. And if we in increase this, you can start to see what's going on. And I can even just maybe bring the width in a little bit, uh, bump up the size. And you start to get that iconic sort of uh, grid that you come to expect with hexagons where everything is sort of very nicely uh, mapping uh, or fitting side by side. And obviously it looks like we're zooming in. It's a bit psychedelic actually. Um, and you don't have to use a particular shape. You can just use circles. And uh, if we make this sort of larger, as you make this bigger, you can obviously start to see that it just gets a little bit too busy but it works, okay? So we've done one type of hex binning. Now I'm gonna do exactly the same thing, but for a map, okay? So I'm gonna go over to sheet uh, three, actually. So this is what it would look like without binning, and this is what it looks like now. Now for mapping, we normally use a latitude and a longitude. So let's have a look and see what that looks like on a map. So let's just bring those two in. I never seem to get these the right way around. Um, and at the moment, all our data has an average around Italy. But if we bring in again, the customer level of detail, we start to see we have a very big global data set. Now, when I created this sample data, I only actually brought in the dimensions for country if it was France and the United Kingdom. So let's filter that down. And now we've got our data set just for France and just for England. And here we want to apply some hex binning. So when we do hex binning on a map, uh, it's sort of different because we're still using the same technique, but we need to actually apply it to some sort of X and Y axis. And of course we don't have that as we'd expect to see it. And that's where the latitude and longitude come in. You see, these are basically the X and Y values on a map. So I'm actually gonna be a little bit lazy and I'm going to duplicate these. Okay, and I'm gonna edit this. I'm gonna rename this hex x, and I'm gonna name this uh, map. Okay, and I'm gonna start with the longitude and latitude. Okay, click apply. And then I'm gonna do the same for this. And as we do this, click apply, we now have two fields. So let me just rename this correctly so that we have a consistent naming. Okay, perfect. Okay, so now uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna duplicate this. So we have a reference point and in order to actually make this work, we still need to tell Tableau that this is a latitude and a longitude. So I'm gonna just change the data type here, uh, give this a geographical role for that one latitude. Again, geographical role for that one longitude. Okay. And then I'm gonna clear this map again. I'm gonna bring in my Y and I'm gonna bring in my X. And if I rotate these a little bit, you start to see, okay, we've got some interesting thing going on here. It is binning, but first and foremost, I wanna bring in just France and the UK. Focus it in, focus us in a little bit. And the density is still not quite right. So what I need to do is twofold. Number one, I need to bump up the density, okay? And you can see very clearly, I've obviously made a mistake because uh, all the data points are around uh, Africa and obviously France and the UK are not around Africa. So I've put these the wrong way around. In fact, not only have I put them the wrong way around, I have also given these the wrong assignment. 
Very easy mistake, very easily fixed. Okay, so now if I put that there and that there, we have the right uh, lat and long for the shapes. And now when I increase the density, you can see very easily that I'm now binning within those countries. And just to make it easy to see, I'll put country on color by control dragging and placing that on color. And then uh, one thing we can do is put number of records on size to show us where is the density of our customers. And we can even go as far as saying, okay, now that we've done that, let's adjust the range of this so that we can see very easily that we do have data spread across the countries, but our smaller customer bases are in the outer regions of each country. And the bigger customer bases are obviously centrally located. And you can sort of play around with this until you get the optimum sort of distribution. And again, you can put, um, instead of country, you can put number of records and color, and you can basically use different techniques here to try and make your data a little bit clearer and a little bit easier to decipher. I'm just going to give this a dark hello there so you can very easily see what's going on. So that's how we do hex binning on a map and also on an X and Y axis where you might be using scatter plots. Let me know what you think. Drop uh, some comments in the uh, feed below. I'm going to attach the workbook that I've used as is right now. So you can obviously take this apart, have a go yourself. And um, I'd love to hear your feedback on the video. If you've got some tips, let me know. And uh, yeah, I'll see you soon.